Act three. <laughs> Scene one, a room in Pinchwife's house. And Lithia and Mrs. Pinchwife. Sister, what ails you? You are grown melancholy. Would it not make anyone melancholy to see you go every day fluttering about abroad while I must stay at home like a poor, lonely, sullen bird in a cage? Aye, sister, but you came young and just from the nest to your cage, so that I thought you liked it and could be as cheerful in it as others that took their flight themselves early and are hopping abroad in the open air. Nay, I confess I was quiet enough until my husband told me what pure lives the London ladies live abroad with their dancing, meetings and junketings and dress every day in their best gowns and, I warrant you, play at nine pins every day of the week, so they do. Enter Pinchwife. Come, what's here to do? You are putting the town pleasures in her head and setting her a longing. Yes, after nine pins. You suffer none to give her those longings, you mean, but yourself. I tell her of the vanities of the town like a confessor. A confessor? Just such a confessor as he that, by forbidding a silly ostler to grease the horse's teeth, taught him to do it. Come, Mrs. Flippant. Good precepts are lost when bad examples are still before us. The liberty you take aboard makes her hanker after it and out of humour at home. Poor wretch. She desired not to come to London. I would bring her. Very well. She has been this week in town, and never desires till this afternoon to go abroad. Was she not at a play yesterday? Yes, but she never asked me. I was myself the cause of her going. Then if she asks you again, you are the cause of her asking, and not my example. Well, tomorrow night I shall be rid of you. And the next day, before tis light, she and I will be rid of the town and my dreadful apprehensions. Come, be not melancholy, for thou shalt go into the country after tomorrow, dearest. Great comfort. Pish, what to tell me of the country for? The house this. What's pish at the country? Let me alone. I am not well. Oh, if that be all. What ailed thy dearest? Truly, I do not know, but I have not been well since you told me that thou was a gallant in the play in love with me. <laughs> That's by my example, too. Nay, if you are not well, but are so concerned because a lewd fellow chanced to lie and say he liked you, you'll make me sick, too. Of what sickness? Oh, that which is worse than the plague. Jealousy. Pish, you jeer. I'm sure there's no disease in our receipt book at home. No, thou never meetest with it, poor innocent. Well, if thou cuckold me, twill be my own fault. For cuckolds and bastards are generally makers of their own fortune. Well, but pray, bud, let's go to a play tonight. It's just done. She comes from it. But why are you so eager to see a play? Faith, dear, not that I care one pin for the t their talk there, but I like to look upon the player men and would see, if I could, the gallant you say loves me. That's all, dear, bud. Is that all, dear bud? This proceeds from my example. But if the play be done, let's go abroad, however, dear bud. Come, have a little patience, and thou shalt go into the country on Friday. Therefore, I would see first some sights to tell my neighbours of. Nay, I will go abroad, that's once. I'm the cause of this desire, too. So now I think on it. Who? Who was the cause of Horner's coming to my lodgings today? That was you. No, you, because you would not let him see your handsome wife out of your lodging. Why, oh Lord, did the gentleman come hover to see me indeed? No, no, you are not the cause of that damn question too, Mistress Alethea. Well, she's in the right of it. He is in love with my wife and comes after her, tis so. But I'll nip his love in the bud, lest he should follow us into the country and break his chariot wheel near our house on purpose for an excuse to come to it. 
but I think I know the town. Come, pray, bird. Let's go abroad before it is late, for I will go, that's flat and plain. So, the obstinacy already of the town wife, and I must, while she's here, humour her like one. Sister, how shall we do that she may be seen, not be seen or known? Let her put on her mask. Pshaw! Sure. A mask makes people but the more inquisitive, and is as ridiculous a disguise as a stage beard. Her shape, stature, habit will be known. And if we should meet with Horner, he will be sure to take acquaintance with us, must wish her joy, kiss her, talk to her, leer upon her, and the devil and all. No, I'll not use her to a mask. It is dangerous, for masks have made more cuckolds than the best faces that ever were known. How will you do then? Nay, shall we go? The exchange will be shut, and I've a mind to see that. So, I have it. I'll dress her up in the suit we are to carry down to her brother, little Sir James. Nay, I understand the town tricks. Come, let's go dress her. A mask? No. A woman masked like a covered dish gives a man curiosity and appetite when it may be uncover, uncovered twould turn his stomach. No, 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 no. Indeed, your comparison is something a greasy one, but I had a gentle gallant used to say, a beauty mask like the sun in eclipse gathers together more gazers than if it shined out. Exit all. Scene two, the new exchange. Enter Horner, Harcourt and Doraland. Engage to women and not to sup with us. Aye, a pox on them all. You were a much more reasonable man in the morning and had as noble resolutions against him as a widower in a week's liberty. But did I ever think to see you keep company with women in vain? In vain? No, it's since I can't love them to be revenged on them. Now your sting is gone. You looked in the box amongst all those women like a drone in the hive, all upon you, shoved and ill-used by them all, and thrust from one side to other. Yet he must be buzzing amongst them still like other beetle-headed licorice drones. Avoid them and hate them as they hate you. Because I do hate them and would hate them yet more, I'll frequent them. You, see, you may see by marriage, nothing makes a man hate a woman more than a constant conversation. In short, I converse with them, as you do with rich fools, to laugh at them and use them ill will. Use them Ill. But I would no more suck with women unless I could lie with them than suck with a rich coxcomb unless I could cheat him. Yes, I have known me sup with a fool for his drinking. If he could set your hand that way only, you were satisfied. And if he were a wine-swallowing mouth, it was enough. Yes, a man drinks often with a fool as he tosses with a marker, only to keep his hand in use. But do the ladies drink? Yes, uh, and I shall have the pleasure at least of laying them flat with a bottle and bring as much scandal that way upon them as formerly t'other. Perhaps you may prove as weak a brother among them that way as t'other. Ah, oh, drinking with women is as unnatural as scolding with them. But tis a pleasure of decayed fornicators <laughs> and the basest way of quenching love. Nay, tis drowning love instead of quenching it. But leave us for civil women too. Aye, when he can't be the better for him. We hardly pardon a man that leaves his friend for a wench, and that's a pretty lawful call. Faith, I would not leave you for him if they would not drink. Who would disappoint his company at Lewis's for a gossiping? <laughs> well, wine and women, good apart, together are as nauseous as sack and sugar. But hark you, sir, before you go, a little of your advice, an old marriage general, when unfit for action is fittest for counsel. I have other designs upon women than eating and drinking with them. I am in love with Sparkish's mistress, whom he is to marry tomorrow. Now, how shall I get her? Enter Sparkish, looking about. <laughs> Why, here comes one will help you to her. Hey, he, he, I tell you, is my rival and will hinder my love. No, no. A foolish rival and a jealous husband assist their rival's design, for they are sure to make their women hate them, which is the first step to their love for another man. 
But I cannot come near his mistress, but in his company. It's still the better for you. The fools are most easily cheated when they themselves are accessories. And he is to be bobbled of his mistress, as of his money, the common mistress, by keeping him company. That that is to be bubbled. Faith, as me snack, I hadn't met with the bubbles since Christmas. God, I think bubbles are like their brother's woodcocks go out of cold weather. Oh, Pox, he did not hear it all, I hope. Come, you bubbling rogues, where do we sup? Oh, Harcourt, my mistress tells me you've been making fierce love to her all the play long. <laughs> But I, I make love to her. Nay, I forgive thee, for I think I know thee, and I know her, and I am sure I know myself. Did she tell you so? I see all women are like these at the exchange, who, to enhance the price of their commodities, report to their food customers offers which were never made to them. Aye, women are apt to tell before the intrigue, as men after it, and so show themselves as a vain of sex. But hast thou a mistress, Sparkish? Tis as hard for me to believe it as that thou ever hadst a bubble, um, just as you brag now. Oh, your servant, sir. Are you at your valery, sir? But we are some of us beforehand with you today at the play. The wits were something bold with you, sir. Did you not hear us laugh? Yes, uh, but I thought you had gone to plays to laugh at the poet's wit, not your own. Your servant, sir, no, I thank you. Gad, I go to a play to a country, to a country tweet, treat. I carry mine own wine to one, and mine own wit to t'other, and or else I'm sure I should not be merry at either. And the reason why we are so often louder than the players is because we think we speak more wit and so become the poet's rival in his audience. But to tell you the truth, we hate the silly rogues. Nay, so much that we find fault even with their body upon the stage whilst we talk nothing else in the pit as loud. But why should those hate the silly poets? Um, Oops, I barely too much, sorry that. Uh, uh, thou hast too much wit to be one, and they, like whores, are only hated by each other, and thou dost scorn white writing, I'm sure. Yes, I'd have you know, I scorn writing. But women, women, that make men do all foolish things, make them write songs too. Everybody does it. It is even as common with lovers as playing with fans. You can no more help rhyming to your Billies, then drinking to your pillies. Nay, poetry in love is no more to be avoided than jealousy. But the poets damned your songs, did they? Damn the poets! They have turned them into burlesque, as they call it. That burlesque is a hocus pocus trick they have got, which, by the virtue of Eticus Lucitus Topsy Turby, they make a wise and witty man in the world. A fool upon the stage, you know not how, and is therefore, I hate him too. For I know, but it may be my own case. For they'll put a man into a play for looking a squint. Their predecessors were contended to make Turvey uh, men only their stage fools. But these rogues must have gentlemen with a box to a day. Knights! And indeed, you shall hardly see a fool upon the stage, but he's a knight. And I tell you the truth, they have kept me these six years from being a knight in earnest for fear of being knighted in a play and dubbed a fool. Blame them not, they must follow their copy, the age. But why shouldst thou be afraid of being in a play? You expose yourself every day in the playhouses and at public places. It is but being on, st on the stage instead of standing on a bench in the pit. Don't you give money to painters to draw you like? And are you afraid of your pictures at length in a playhouse where all your mistresses may see you? Oh, pox! Painters don't draw the smallpox or pimples in one's face. 
Come down all your silly authors, whatever, all books and booksellers by the world, and all readers, courteous or uncourteous. Who comes here, Sparkish? Enter Pinchwife and Mrs. Pinchwife in man's clothes, Alethea and Lucy. Oh, hide me! There's my mistress too! Sparkish hides himself behind Harcourt. Uh, she sees you. But I will not see her. Uh, it is time I go to Whitehall. I must not fail the drawing room. Oh, pray, first carry me and reconcile me to her. Another time! Faith, the king will accept. Not with the worst servant for thy absence. Thou art one of those fools that think their attendance at the king's meals is as necessary as his physicians, when you are more troublesome to him than his doctors or his, his dogs. Pshaw! I know my interest, sir. Prithee, hide me. Your servant, Pinchwife? What? He knows us not. Come along. Pray, have you any ballads? Give me six penny worth. We have no ballads. Then give me Covent Garden drollery and a play or two. Oh, there's Tarugo's Wiles and... And the Slighted Maiden, I'll have them. No, that's not for your reading. Come along, will you discover yourself? Who is that pretty youth with him, Sparkish? I believe his wife's brother, because he's something like her, but I never saw her but once. Extremely handsome. Uh, I've, I've seen a face like it too, let us follow him. Exit Pinchwife, Mrs Pinchwife, Alethea and Lucy. Horner and Doralent following them. Uh, come, Sparkish. Your mistress saw you and will be angry you not go to her. Besides, I would fain be reconciled to her, which none but you can do, dear friend. Well, that's a better reason, dear friend. I would not go near her now for her or my own sake, but I can deny you nothing. Although I have known thee a great while, Never go, if I do not love thee as well as a new acquaintance. I am, I am obliged to you indeed, dear friend. I will be well with her, only to be well with thee still, for these ties to wives usually dissolve all ties to friends. Oh no, is this me or not? It says Mar. Is it supposed to be Har? Yeah. I think uh, it's supposed sorry. to be Har as this type her. Caught, caught me off guard. I'm obliged to you indeed, dear friend. I, I would be well with her, only to be well with thee still. For these ties to wives usually dissolve all ties to friends. Uh, I would be contented she should enjoy you a night, but I would have you to myself for days, as I have had, dear friend. And thou shalt enjoy me in days, dear, dear friend. Never stir, and I'll be divorced from her sooner than from thee. Come along. So, we are hard put to it when we make our rival our procurer, but neither she nor her brother would let me come near her now. Uh, when all's done, a rival is the best cloak to steal a mistress under, without suspicion, and when we have got her as we desire, we throw him off, like other cloaks. Exit Sparkish, Harcourt following him. Re-enter Pinchwife and Mrs. Pinchwife. Sister, if you will not go, we must leave you. The fool, her gallant, and she will muster up all the young saunterers of this place. They will leave their dear temptresses to follow us. What a swarm of cuckolds and cuckold makers are here. Come, let's be gone, Mistress Marjorie. Don't you believe that? I ain't had half my belly full of sights yet. Then walk this way. Lord, what a power of brave signs are, are here. Stay, the bull's head, the ram's head, and the stag's head. Dear. Nay, if every husband's proper sign here were visible, they would be all alike. What do you mean by that, but? Tis no matter. Tis no matter, but. Pray, tell me. Nay, I will know. They would be all bull's, stag's, and ram's heads. Exit Pinchwife and Mrs. Pinchwife. Re-enter Sparkish, Harcourt, and Alethea. Come, dear madam, for my sake you shall be reconciled to him. For your sake I hate him. Oh, that's something too cruel, madam, to hate me for his sake. Aye. Ah. 
Sorry. I indeed, madam, too, too cruel to me to hate my friend for my sake. I hate him because he is your enemy, and you ought to hate him too for making love to me, if you love me. <laughs> That's a good one. I hate a man for loving you. If he did love you, tis but what he can't help, and tis your fault, not his, if he admires you. I hate a man for being of my opinion. I'll never do it by the world. Is it for your honour or mine to suffer a man to make love to me? Who, whom am I to marry you tomorrow? It's, is it for your honour or mine to have me jealous that he makes love to you is a sign you are handsome and that I am not jealous is a sign you are virtuous? That, I think, is for your honour. But tis your honour too I am concerned for. But why, dearest madam, will you be more concerned for his honour than he is for himself? Let his honour alone, for my sake, and for his, he, he has no honour. How's that? But what, my dear friend, can guard himself? Ah! Uh, Oh, that's right again. Mm, your honour, uh, your care of his honour, argues his neglect of it, which is no honour to my dear friend here. Uh, therefore, once more, let his honour go which way it will, dear madam. Aye, aye, were it for my honour to marry a woman whose virtue I suspected and could not trust her in a friend's hands? Are you not afraid to lose me? He afraid to lose you, madam. No, uh, no, you may see how the most estimable and most glorious creature in the world is valued by him. Uh, will you not see it? Right, honest Frank, I have that noble value for her that I cannot be jealous of her. You mistake him. He means you care not for me, nor who has me. Lord, madam. I see you are jealous. Well, you rest a poor man's meanings from his words. You astonish me, sir, with your want of jealousy. And you make me giddy, madam, with your jealousy and fears and virtue and honour. Gad! I see virtue makes a woman as troublesome as a little reading or learning. Monstrous! Well, to see what easy husbands these women of quality can meet with. A poor cham chambermaid can never have such ladylike luck. Besides, he's thro thrown away upon her. She'll make no use of her fortune, her blessing, none to a gentleman for a pure cuckold. For it requires a good breeding to be a cuckold. I tell you plainly, he pursues me to marry me. Pshaw! Oh, madam, uh, you see you strive in vain to make him jealous of me. My dear friend is the kindest creature in the world to me. Poor fellow. Uh, but his kindness only is not enough for me. Without your favour, your good opinion, dear madam, tis that must be perfect, my happiness. Good gentleman, he believes all I say. Would you would do so? Jealous of me? I would not wrong him for not. I, I, I would not wrong him nor you for the world. Look you there, hear him, hear him, and do not walk away so. Alithia walks carelessly to and fro. I love you, madam. So how's that? Lay and now you begin to go too far indeed. So much, I confess, I say, I love you, that I would not have you miserable and cast yourself away upon so unworthy and inconsiderable a thing as what you see. Clapping his hand yeah. on his breast, points at Sparkish. No, Faith, I believe thou wouldst not. Now his meaning is plain, but I knew before thou wouldst not wrong me nor her. No, no, heavens forbid the glory of her sex should fall so low as into the embraces of such a contemptible wretch, the least of mankind. My friend here, I injure him. Embracing well. Sparkish. No, no, dear friend, I knew it. Madam, you will 
You see, he will rather wrong himself than me in giving himself such names. Do you not understand him yet? Yes, how modestly he speaks of himself, poor fellow. Methinks he speaks impudently of yourself, since before yourself too, insomuch that I can no longer suffer his scurrilous abusiveness to you, no more than his love to me. Offers to go. Nay, nay, madam, pray stay. He's love to you. Lord, madam, has he not spoke yet plain enough? Yes, indeed, I should think so. Well, then, by the world, a man can't speak civilly to a woman now. But presently, she says he makes love to her. Nay, madam, you shall stay with your pun, since you have not yet understood him till he has made an eclarissement of his love to you, that is, what kind of love it is. Answer to thy Catholicism, friend. Do you love my mistress here? Yes. I wish she would not doubt it. But how do you love her? With all my soul. I thank him. He, methinks he speaks plain enough now. You are out still. But with what kind of love, Harcourt? With the best and the truest love in the world. Look you there, then. That is with no matrimonial love, I am sure. How's that? Do you say matrimonial love is not best? Again, I went too far, I was aware. But speak for thyself, Harcourt. You said you would not wrong me nor her. No. So, madam, even take him for heaven's sake. Look you there, madam. Who should in all justice be yours? He that loves you most. Taps his hand on his breast. Look you there, Mr. Sparkish. Who's that? Who should it be? Go on, Harcourt. Who loves you more than women titles or fortune fools? Points at Sparkish. Look you there, he means me still, for he points at me. Ridiculous. Who can only match your faith and constancy in love? Why? Who knows, if it be possible, how to value so much beauty and virtue? I. Whose love can no more be equaled in the world than that heavenly form of yours? No. Who could no more suffer a rival than your absence, and yet could no more suspect your virtue than his own constancy in his love to you? No. Who, in fine, loves you better than his eyes that made him first love you? I, nay, madam, you shan't go till. Have a care lest you make me stay too long. But till he has saluted you, that I may be assured you are friends after his honest advice and declaration. Come, pray, madam, be friends with him. Re-enter Pinchwife and Mrs. Pinchwife. You must pardon me, sir, that I am not yet so obedient to you. What? Invite you <coughs> to kiss men? Monstrous. Are you not ashamed? I will never forgive you. Are you not ashamed that I should have more confidence in the chastity of your family than you have? You must not teach me. I am a man of honour, sir, though I am frank and free. I am frank, sir. Very frank, sir, to share your wife with your friends. He is an humble, menial friend, such as reconciles the difference of the marriage bed, you know, man and wife do not always degree, agree. I design him for that use, therefore would have him well with my wife. A menial, fee, menial friend? You will get a great many menial friends by showing your wife as you do. What then? It may be I have pleasure in it, as I have to show fine clothes at a playhouse the first day and count money before poor rogues. He that shows his wife or money will be in danger of having them borrowed sometimes. I 
love to be envied, and would not marry a wife that I alone could love. Loving alone is dull as eating alone. It is, is it not a frank age? And I am a frank person. And to tell you the truth, it may be. I love to have rivals in a wife. They make her seem so, they make her seem to a man still, but as kept a, but as a kept mistress. And so, good night, for I must to Whitehall. Madam, I hope you are now reconciled to my friend. And so I wish you a good night, madam, and sleep if you can. For tomorrow, you know, I must visit you early with a canonical gentleman. Good night, dear Harcourt. Exit Sparge. Uh, madam, I hope you will not refuse my visit tomorrow, if it should be earlier, uh, with a canonical gentleman than Mr. Sparkish's. This gentlewoman is yet under my care. Therefore, you must yet forbear your freedom with her, sir. Coming between Alethea and Harcourt. Must, sir? Yes, sir. She is my sister. Tis well she is, sir. For I must be her servant, sir. Um, madam. Come away, sister. We had been gone if it had been not been for you, and so avoided these lewd rake hells who seem to haunt us. Re-enter Horner and Dorilant. How now, pinch wife? Your servant. What? I see a little time in the country makes a man turn wild and unsociable, and only fit to converse with his horses, dogs, and his herds. I have business, sir, and must mind it. Your business is pleasure. Therefore, you and I must go different ways. Well, you may go on, but this pretty young gentleman... Corner takes hold of Mrs Pinchwife. The lady... And the maid. ...shall stay with us, for I suppose their business is the same with ours. Pleasure. Steph. He knows her. She carries it so silly. Yet if he does not, I should be more silly to discover it first. Pray, let us go, sir. Uh, come, come. Uh, do you not rather stay with us? Privy, Pinchwife, who is this pretty young gentleman? One to whom I'm a guardian. I wish I could keep her out of your hands. Well, who is he? I've never seen, saw anything so pretty in all my life. Pshaw! Do not look upon him so much. He's a poor, bashful youth. You'll put him out of countenance. Come away, brother. Offers to take her oh. away. Oh, your brother! Yes, my wife's brother. Come, come, she'll stay supper for us. I thought so, for he's very like her I saw with you at uh, the play with, whom I told you I was in love with. Oh, Gemini, is that he that was in love with me? I am glad on it. I vow for his curious fine gentleman, and I love him already. Is that he, but? Come away, come away. Why, why, you haste are you in? Why won't you let me talk with him? Because you'll debauch him. Yet he... He's yet young and innocent, and I would not have him debauched for anything in the world. How she gazes on him, the devil. Harcourt, Dorland, look you here. This, this is the likeness of that dowdy he told us of his wife. Did you ever see a lovelier creature? The rogue has reason to be jealous of his wife, since she is like him, for she would make all that see her in love with her. And as I remember now, she is as like him here as can be. She is indeed very pretty, if she be like him. Mm, very pretty, a very pretty commendation. She's a glorious creature, beyond all things I've ever beheld. So, so. More beautiful than a poet's first mistress of imagination. Or another man's last mistress of flesh and blood. Nay, now, don't you jeer, sir. Pray don't jeer me. Come, come. <laughs> Heavens, she'll discover herself. I speak of your sister, sir. Aye, but saying she was handsome, if like him, made him blush. I'm upon a rack. He thinks he's so handsome he should not be a man. Oh, there, tis out. He has discovered her. I'm not able to suffer any longer. Come, come, away, away, I say. Nay, nay, by your leave, sir. Um, he shall not go yet. 
Harcourt, Doyland. Let us torment this jealous rogue a little. How? Well, I'll show you. Come, pray, let him go. I cannot stay falling any longer. I tell you, his sister stays supper for us. Does she? Come then, we'll all go to supper with uh, he and thee. Uh, no, now I think on Having stayed so long for us, I warrant she's gone to bed. <laughs> I wish she and I were well out of their hands. Come, I must rise early tomorrow. Come. Oh, well then, if she be gone to bed, I wish her and you a good night. But pray, young gentleman, pre uh, present my humble service to her. Thank you heartily, sir. She will discover herself yet in spite of me. He is something more civil to you for your kindness to his sister than I am, it seems. Tell her, dear sweet gentleman, uh, uh, dear sweet little gentleman, for uh, all your brother there, that you have revived the love I had for her at first sight in the titles. But did you love her indeed and indeed? So, so. Away, I say. Nay, stay. Yes, indeed and indeed. Pray do you tell her so and give her this kiss from me. Orna kisses her. Oh, heavens! What do I suffer? Now it is too plain he knows her, and yet... And this! And this! Orna kisses her again. What do you kiss me for? I am no woman! So there, tis out. Come, I cannot nor will stay any longer. Nay, they shall send your lady a kiss too. Here, Harcourt, Doyland, uh, Doyland, will you not? Uh -huh. They will kiss her. No. How? How do I suffer this? Was I not accusing another just now for this rascally patience in permitting his wife to be kissed before his face? Ten thousand ulcers gnaw away their lips. Come, come. Good night, dear little gentleman. Madam, good night. Farewell, pinchwaf. A uh, pinchwife? Um, did I not tell you I would raise his jealous squall? Exit Horner, Harcourt, and Doraland. Sir, they are gone at last. Stay, let me see first if the coach be at this door. Exit Pinchwife. Re-enter Horner, Harcourt, and Doraland. What? Not gone yet. Uh, we be, uh, be sure to do as I decide, desired you, sweet sir. Sweet sir, but what will you give me then? <laughs> Anything. Come away, come away into the next port. Exit, hailing away Mrs. Pinchworth. Hold, hold, what do you do? Stay, stay, hold. Hold, madam, hold. Let him present him. He'll come presently. Nay, I will never let you go till you answer my question. For God's sake, sir, I must follow them. Elitha and Lucy struggling with Harcourt and Doraland. No, I have something to present you with, too. You shan't follow them. Re-enter Pinchwife. What? How? What's become Gone? With a... He's only gone with the gentleman who will give him something. Ain't please, your worship. Something? Give him something with the pox? Where are they? In the next walk only, brother. Only, only, where, where? Pinchwife exits and returns presently, then goes out again. What's the matter with him? Why so much concern? Ah, but dearest madam. Pray let me go, sir. I have said and suffered enough already. Then you will not look upon nor pity my sufferings. To look upon them when I cannot help them were cruelty, not pity. Therefore, I will never see you more. Mm, uh, let me then, madam, have my privilege of a banished lover, complaining or railing and giving you but a farewell reason why, if you cannot condescend to marry me, you should not take that wretch my rival. He only, not you, since my honour is engaged so far to him, can give me a reason why I should not marry him. But if he be true, and what I think him to me, I must be so to him, your servant, sir. Have women only constancy when tis a vice, and are like fortune only true to fools. Thou shalt not stir, thou robust creature. You see I can deal with you, therefore you should stay the rather and be kind. Lucy struggles to free herself from Doraland. Re-enter Pinchwife. Gone! Gone! Not to be found! Quite gone! 
ten thousand plagues go with them. Which way went they? But in t'other work, brother. Their business will be done presently, sure. And please your worship, it can't be long in doing, I'm sure. Are they not there? No, you know where they are, you infamous wretch, eternal shame of your family, which you do not dishonour enough yourself, you think, but you must help her to do it too, thou legion of boards. Good brother! Damn, damned sister! Look you here, she's coming! Re-enter Mrs Pitchwife running, with her hat full of oranges and dried fruit under her arm, Horner following her. Oh dear bud, look you what look you here what I have got, see? And what I have got here too, which you can't see. <laughs> the fine gentleman has given me better things yet. Oh, has he so? Out of breath and coloured. I must hold yet. But I have only given your little brother an orange, sir. Thank you, sir. You have only squeezed my orange, I suppose, and given it me again, yet I must have a city patience. Come, come away. Stay till I have put up my fine things, bud. Enter Sir Jasper Fidget. Oh, Master Horner, come, come, the ladies stay for you. Your mistress, my wife, wonders you make not more haste to her. I have stayed this half hour for you here, and it is your fault I'm not now with your wife. But pray, don't let her know so much. The truth on it is, I was advancing a certain project to his majesty about, I'll tell you. No, let's go and hear it at your house. Good night, sweet gentleman. One kiss more, you'll remember me now, I hope. Orna kisses Mrs. Inchwife. What, Sir Jasper, will you separate friends? He promised to sup with us, and if you take him to your house, you'll be in danger of our company too. Alas, gentlemen, my house is not fit for you. There are none but civil women there which are not for your turn. He, you know, can bear with the society of civil women now. <laughs> Besides, he is one of my family. He's... <laughs> what is he? Faith, my eunuch, since you'll have it. Exit Sir Jasper Fidget and Horner. I rather wish thou wert his or my cuckold. Hark, oh, cool. What a good cuckold is lost there for want of a man to make him one. Thee and I cannot have Horner's privilege who can make use of it. Aye, to poor Horner, tis like coming to an estate at threescore, but a man can't be the better for it. Come. Oh, presently, bud. Come, let us go to madam, your servant. Good night, strapper. Madam, though you will not let me have a good day or night, I wish you one, but dare not name the other half of my wish. Good night, sir, forever. I don't know where to put this here, dear bud, but shall you shall eat it. Nay, you shall have a part of the fine gentleman's givings or treat, as you call it, when we come home. Indeed, I deserve it since I furnished the best part of it. The gallant treats presents and gives the ball, but tis the absent cuckold pays for all. Exit all. <laughs>